Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Progenitor. This is the podcast where we go over a director's entire filmography, talking about themes, scenes, pacing, and give a brief review all within 30 minutes. So let's get started. And as you guys know, we are still on Sir Ridley Scott, and we are on to his next film. And we are back in the medieval period, in the Middle Ages, knights in shining armor, squires, damsels in distress, or wives in the courts. This next film, it is loosely based on a true story. It is based on a book about the quote-unquote last duel in France that, that occurred. And this movie is, wow. It takes us back to Ridley Scott's fascination with this code of conduct and this code of honor in terms of the medieval period. So let's look back a little bit. The duelist is all about this code of honor, right? And these guys continue to duel because you've besmirched my honor, right? <clears throat> Dubert uh, versus the other guy. And then you have Kingdom of Heaven, which is also during the Crusades. But there are definitely knights in shining armor. And during that time, you know, they're... They're trying to find honor in in God or in getting more land, whatever seems more honorable, quote unquote, to whichever knight is there. But this one is actually more selfish. It it comes off a lot more selfish, but I but let's get into it. This next film is The Last Duel, and I love this movie. And one of the reasons why I love it is not it's not the way the narrative is built. So let's talk about the story real quick. So you have Matt Damon, and he's playing Sir Jean de Carouge. And then you have Adam Driver playing Jacques Legris. And then you have Margaret de Carouge played by Jodie Comer. So what you have is kind of like three perspectives of one incident. And you get to see how men are pretty, uh, like these particular men <laughs> during the Middle Ages are just complete assholes and dicks who care nothing about women and think of them only as property. And then you have Margaret de Carouge, who we learn throughout the story that she was raped by Jacques Legris, and she's fighting for her honor. And at the same time, her husband, Jacques Legris, played by Matt Damon, is fighting for his wife's honor, quote unquote, but it's actually for his face and his name because he cares nothing about his wife. And it, and it's just this three-pronged approach in storytelling that's very much, quote unquote, like Rashomon. I haven't seen Rashomon in a long time. I'm definitely due a rewatch, but at the same time, I think the way they do this is very effective. It doesn't come off as you know, like a in-your-face remake or anything like that. But it definitely has something to say, especially during the Me Too period. And, and considering the writers, you know, you have Ben Affleck, you have Matt Damon. They co-wrote it with Nicole Hall of Center. And if you look at her, I mean, we're going to get into the cast and the crew, but you have to look at her filmography because she's also a director and a writer and and you kind of you kind of get that they're trying to get as many perspectives as possible so what i really love about this movie is it's down and dirty like this is ridley scott getting back into tangible filmmaking no more of the sci-fi he's got his team arthur max doing all the wonderful production designs and Jaunty Yates doing the costumes and everything just feels really period. And it, it just feels top notch. And 
the best part is the end. There is the last duel, and it just blew my mind. It's such a great last duel. So the plot description is basically one rape, and it's being interpreted by three different perspectives. The first one is Jean Le Carouge, who thinks that he's the most honorable man, and and he thinks that the world is against him. Then you have Jacques Legree, and he thinks he's the most wonderful man, and the world is for him, and he falls in love with Jean Le Carouge's wife, and he thinks that what he's doing is showing her absolute love, where in her perspective, it's a rape. And finally, you get, quote-unquote, the truth from Marguerite de Cruges. And it basically shows both of these guys as genuine dicks who care nothing about her, care nothing about anything but their legacy and how they feel. And you, and the funny thing is you see that they're dicks even in their perspectives. But it's so funny because they don't think they're dicks. They just are looking in their own perspective of their world. And it's just so funny how sometimes we we can totally be selfish and not see the needs of others and not see the pain of others because we're just like, okay, this is our lives. What's most more important than that, right? So that's kind of the, the entire plot. And it basically comes to the point where Marguerite accuses Jacques Legree of rape. They go to court and then they say, okay, we're going to do a duel and whoever wins the duel, you know, is, is part of like, of course, only the truth wins. So whoever's lying is going to die. So if Jean de Carouge loses Marguerite will be considered a, li- a liar and a witch and will be burned at the stake as well. So they would both die. But if Jacques Legree loses, then the Carouge family will be lifted up, basically, and will be redeemed. It's just, it's just heart-pounding, actually, when, when you get to the final 20 minutes. I, I think the final battle is like 20 15 to 20 minutes, but it is freaking glorious. It, it, it is an amazing, amazing fight. And like I said, I love this movie. It is in the top 10. Like I said, we're going to do a countdown at, at the very end on all Ridley Scott films. And this is definitely in the top 10. What I love about this film is just the tangibility of, of the fight scenes at the very end. And not just that, it, it's the humanity behind these ugly characters and then the humanity of a woman fighting for her own rights, right? These guys are dicks, okay? I'm, I'm going to say it, Jean de Cruz and Jacques Legree, they're dicks, okay? And don't even get me started with Ben Affleck's Pierre de Alesson because he is even worse. Like, he is he is the head of this entire region and he has Jacques Legree under him but they're like buddy buddy they sleep with all the same women they have affairs multiple times and I I don't know how to mention this but every guy is a dick in this movie but you the scary thing is you understand why they are the way they are and sometimes like when you get into the head of a, a character I mean, not that you start to sympathize with them, but sometimes they're written so well that you can't help it. Like you understand their pain. You understand the misfortunes that are brought upon them, even though you know these people are just dicks and evil people. But it's just, you can't help it because it it's the direction, it's the writing, everything's kind of hitting on all cylinders. And that's what this movie did to me, you know? And... I have I have a friend, a very good friend. We were talking about this movie, and he he thought it was very good. But the only thing that he didn't like is that Marguerite de Carouge's portion is called the truth. You know, it just spells it out the truth 
at the same time, I understand why they did it. But you have to consider that each of these characters, each of these three stories, these are their truths in their mind, right? So at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not really sure what the true, true story is because, you know, we don't really know. I, I haven't read the book and I'm sure the book can't go into every single detail of every person's life, right? So we don't know everything about Marguerite de Cruz's life or Sir Jean de Cruz or Jacques Legree. We we don't know everything about these people, but it's it's definitely interesting how Ridley Scott specifically pinpoints Marguerite's story as the truth. And another interesting thing is uh, there's a character of Jean de Cruz's mother, and and what's interesting about her is she's she also says that she was raped, and she didn't complain about it. She just lived life because that's what that period. Did they understood their place in the world, which is probably not the best way to describe it, but like at that time, for some reason, women were considered property, and no matter how terrible that sounds, you know that was the way it was back in the day. So, anyways, what I want to say about this movie are the performances are top notch, the production, everything about it is top notch, but nothing beats that last 15 to 20 minutes because when I was in the theater, I was holding my wife's hand, just gripping it just out of complete enthrallment of what was going on in front of me, the fight, the, the pain, the sweat and the blood. It's all there. That last 15 minutes of just anger and violence, just spewing out of each of these characters. And then at the same time, Marguerite watching it, feeling the fear. And at this point she's pregnant too. So she's worried not only for herself, but for her baby. And to be honest, she probably doesn't give a fuck about her husband, but if her husband dies, then, you know, she would have to die and her child would have to die. So there's a lot, at risk. And that's what really brings the tension in at the last 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Anyways, let's get into the cast and the crew. Let's start with the crew. We already know Ridley Scott, director, producer. And this is the second time, but Matt Damon is back. He is producing with Nicole Hoffman Center and Ben Affleck and Jennifer Fox. There's a bunch of producers on this including Kevin J. Wall. She's back. And they did all the money in the world prior. And like I mentioned before, the writers are Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Nicole Hall, Hall of Center. And we all know Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. The One of their first screenplays ever was Good Will Hunting, right? It's about these two buddy, or it's about this guy who's extremely smart, blah, blah, blah. He's got friends. He meets a woman. He goes to therapy. You know, and what I like about them is that they're able to create the funny. They have a lot of humor in this film. They have a lot of selfishness in this film. They just have a lot of fun. It, it seems like they have a lot of fun spitballing back and forth, collaborating on the script. And we already know Nicole Hall of Center. She came in and brought a lot of humanity to the Marguerite character, which is really great. Uh, next up, you have Claire Simpson in editing. We already know that they've already worked on all the money in the world pr previously. And she helped with someone to watch over me. So her and Ridley Scott have worked together before. And what I really enjoy is just the jumping back and forth in terms of narrative. And then the, and the three stories are so well defined and just the cutting of the final fight scene is just so full of energy. I think she does perfectly in this film. Darius Walski, again, he's back, but his cinematography is perfect for this because he has like these grays and these autumnal browns. And, and when we get to the fight scene at the end, it is just gray and white and cold. 
you feel every single hit and he goes handheld during the fight scenes and he also he does so many things with the with the last fight scene so you feel like the kineticism and you also feel the pain like it's just really cool the way the last fight scene is shot and cut i think it's masterfully done and of course arthur max he's back again guys and you know, he's done plenty of films, but this harkens back to Kingdom of Heaven, Robin Hood, Gladiator. This is that period feel, and he's just really great with that. Let's get into the all-star cast, because it is all-star. I mean, we are talking about Matt Damon. We're talking about Ben Affleck. And I got to say, I didn't even mention this before, but Ben Affleck is having a ball in this movie. I don't know if he's really doing an accent. Maybe he's doing like a posh English, posh American, like mixing it up. He's definitely not doing a French accent. That's for sure. But he is so funny in this and his character is abysmal. Like he has a wife who is pregnant and then you just see him having multiple orgies in this movie. And... And you know you're not rooting for this guy. You know this guy's a dick, but he has all the power. So it reminds you of all these Hollywood hotshots that had all this power and thought that they could get away with everything. And at the end, the guys that they support like ended up falling, you know, and then they end up losing face, you know. So it's kind of like I said, they're sort of critiquing that Me Too period saying yes there are dicks in this industry (laughs) but yeah and then you know adam driver one of the best young actors working right now and i can't wait to see his ferrari with michael mann but he's definitely been in some of the greatest movies that have come out recently inside lewin davis he's great in that silence patterson patterson is actually actually a really great Jim Jarmusch film if you haven't seen it and you know he's doing great work Don Quixote oh my god if you guys have not seen Terry Gilliam's Don Quixote it is it is a ride and another thing so Matt Damon is back on his second run but Martin's I don't know how to say his last name Tokus but he was also in a lot of other Ridley Scott films like Kingdom of Heaven he played the the Guy de Lusignan, the bad guy, pretty much. And I could have swore he was in a, another Ridley Scott movie, but I'm looking at his uh, letterbox right now, and I guess it was this and Kingdom of Heaven. But he's really good at playing more sinister characters. Oh, and I didn't even mention Jodie Comer. She is wonderful in this film. She's beautiful. She's... Like, she's an up-and-comer, for sure. And, you know, she has her TV show, uh, Killing Eve. You know, I remember seeing her, her in Free Guys and was like, yeah, she's she's going to be great. But, yeah, after watching her in The Last Duel, that pretty much cements it. And as we talked about, recent Ridley Scott collaborations, Arthur Max, Darius Wolski, and Claire Simpson, this is her second movie, And Matt Damon, this is his second movie. They're definitely having a ball in this movie. Now, let's get into some themes and power female characters. Ding, ding, ding. Marguerite de Rouge. She is so strong. And the last 45, 45 to 50 minutes of this movie is her story, her truth. And she just performs it so well. And it's so funny. Like... In the three iterations of her, there's slight variations of the rape scene and and her introductions and and everything. But Jodie Comer does such a great performance to differentiate each perspective of her from the men to herself. And it's just she she's wonderful. And the fact that it like everyone Every woman during this time seems to have been, quote unquote, raped against their 
or had sex against their will at one point or another. She was one of the ones that was like, I'm going to stand up to this. I did not deserve this. Very strong female character. Nature space is a hostile and uncontrollable environment. Ding, ding, ding. Especially when you're at war or you're fighting in like a mud pit. <laughs> or, you know, even the fact that she was at home and behind the wall of her home, this guy could hide in like a shadow and break into her house and rape her. You know what I mean? Anything can happen in these environments when you're not fully in control. And unfortunately, that was the case in this film. The only way to survive is to adapt. Ding, ding, ding. When you get to Marguerite de Carouge's portion, you realize that she had to adapt to her husband or else her husband would nevertheless just kill her. Essentially, because she wasn't bearing him any children. And she wasn't very helpful. Like, he could have just, like, left her alone. But at one point or another, he realized that, okay, I'm going to let you do, I'm going to let you take care of some stuff while I'm out at war, okay? Don't do too much. Don't go out, blah, 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 right? And she, like, kind of willingly went with that. And when he was at war, she did her own thing. And she stood out. So she adapted when he was there. She adapted when he left. Jacques Legree adapts to Pierre and sucks up to him and does all those things where you can rise up in the ladder, right? The only character that doesn't adapt but wins is um, Jean Le Carouge because he's a dick and all he knows is fighting. And he can't adapt to just having a normal life. So at the end of the movie, you read that he went to war after he won the duel. He went to war and he died. And he left Marguerite to pretty much a happy life with her son. So the only way to survive is to adapt. And unfortunately, Jean, Jean de Carouge did not adapt. So, oh, and at the same time, Jacques Legree could not adapt to Jean de Carouge and he got killed too. So H does not mean a thing. You know, it's really weird. I remember when I was a kid and there's Knight in Shining Armor and then there was the Squire. So I, was, I always thought the Squire was just like the guy next to the Knight. In this movie, it's like completely different. And it kind of blew my mind because I always thought that the that the squire was going to be like this young kid who is like, oh, let me hold your sword or your shield while you're, while you don't need it, you know? But no, because Legree was a squire and Carouge was a knight. And pretty much they were sort of on the same level up to a point, but Legree was rising in the social world and not in the martial world where the night was rising. You know what I'm saying? So um, age does not mean a thing. I feel like Legree is a little younger than Carouge. Carouge has just been fighting all his life. Legree is able to adapt to these social environments and rise. but And, and at the same time, Marguerite is pretty young too. And, and she's able to adapt. So... Yeah, th this is definitely the case. Age does not mean anything. Ding, ding, ding. Do not trust rich people. Money is coveted. Ding, ding, ding. This is definitely a big thing. Because Pierre is kind of like the baron of this of this region. Like, um, he's not the king, but he's the cousin to the king. So he has power and he has money. And because of that, he's able to force his will on others. You, you see what I'm saying? And because of that, like people bow down to him, you know, a little dick sucking to get somewhere or a little bit of, you know, just what is that? Just like sucking up to this guy pretty much. And at the same time, this guy is so fickle. He, if you don't know how to get have a good time like Jean de Carouge, he doesn't like him. So he goes with Jacques Legree because Jacques Legree knows how to have a good time. And so it's just a fickle nature of these people that have money and and rich and powerful 
they they covet all this and jean jean de carouge he all he wants is money that's why he's going to fight he doesn't know any better he doesn't know anything else but fighting so that's how he makes his money happy wife happy life yeah dude if you had stayed home try to learn a little bit about your wife and her passions jacques jean de carouge maybe jacques Legree wouldn't have raped her and been around but you're off at war you're leaving people vulnerable and i mean it's not completely his fault and it's not completely her fault and it's not completely Legree's fault everyone's at fault because all the men are dicks and you know i i don't know how it would be marguerite's fault unless she actually like looked at him sensually and kind of like lowered her dress but other than that i i don't know that's kind of awful distrust of authority yeah definitely especially with pierre on ben affleck's character on the throne well not on a throne i mean on a throne but not on the throne of france yeah violence don't solve a thing brains do well in this case violence did solve a thing so this is a little different because the last duel is the last duel and it pretty much solved all issues with honor <laughs> but at the same time not for jacques Legree, he's he's dead he's gone but i'm sure if he was able to talk it out just a little more he would have got away with it but for margaret dick rouge i think what she did was a brave thing and her husband jean de carouge backed her up supported her although it was for the wrong reasons for selfish reasons so at the end of the day she did solve a problem and she used her brain to do it maybe not her husband because he decided you know the only thing i know how to do is fight but she survived because she did what she knew was right and she used her brain to do it so yeah, ding ding ding. There you go. Battle of the sexes. We already mentioned so much about that. Do not trust robots and androids. The men in this movie are pretty much androids, devoid of emotion, of love. <laughs> They're all dicks. But yeah, there are no actual robots or androids in this movie. Ding ding ding. The afterlife, death, God. I I mentioned this before, and what they say in this movie is that. If you're telling the truth, God will God will get you through this <laughs> and basically you'll win. And guess what? Jean de Carouge and Marguerite de Carouge win, right? But you have to consider what's going on at the same time because the church at that time was I feel like the church wasn't about God at all, you know? It was just about these people trying to hold power trying to hold sway in people's lives and that's not the way you know the church should be right the church should be supportive it shouldn't even be saying that women are property that was an old way of thinking right you read some of the new testaments they don't think like that right and a lot of women in in the old and new testaments are heroes of the bible back in that time you can look at the crusades as well people were fighting for the name of god but were they or was it for their own glory and their own sanctification and their own power right so that's a difficult thing see looking at it from a christian's perspective i can see like all these wrong things that that are being done in the name of god but at the same time that's a blaspheme right because they're saying god's name in vain by doing the wrong thing instead they should be supportive and trying to find out what the truth is rather than <laughs> blame her it, and dude it's so funny there's like these these quotes in the movie where it's like they're trying to find out if marguerite de carouge before she got raped but if she can even have a baby because to have a baby you need to have an orgasm and you can only have an orgasm if you love the sex that you're having with your husband and and that God wills it so are is this like a union from God kind of thing so it it's just so weird how things 
were portrayed back in the day or not portrayed, but how things were back in the day, like how they used God as an excuse sometimes uh, to say, oh, your relationship is no good. Well, your relationship is no good because your husband is a dick and doesn't really care for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I'm I'm glad things have gone away from that. Now, let's talk about some scenes because there are a lot of great scenes in this movie. Of course, the number one is the final last duel. And that that is great. And that's the main one that is recommended in this entire movie because it's 15, 20 minutes of pulse pounding choreography and everything is done pitch perfect. Now there's a lot of great scenes with Ben Affleck and Adam driver in this movie, but it'll make you feel a little disgusting because of what they're doing. Like there's a couple of orgy scenes in this film. Everything with Jean de Carouge is just so painful because his character is just doesn't know how to be a good person. He doesn't know how to socialize. So he's always angry. He always wants to have a fight. So he, he reminds me of Harvey Keitel's character in The Duelist. And Jacques Legree, Adam Driver's character, reminds me of Keith Carradine's character. But in The Duelist, these people are more... You don't really get to see their private life. You see their duels primarily. That's the that's the main character. That's where they get their aggressions out. And that's where Harvey Keitel's character can be who he is, right? And so they don't really dive into Harvey Keitel's love life or anything, but you know, they give you a little flavor for Keith Carradine. And in this movie, you get both of these assholes perspectives of their quote unquote love lives and, and what they cherish in terms of that. But all in all, this is definitely in the top 10 guys. And it's just for that last duel scene. And it is amazing scene. This is an amazing, amazing film. I, it was, it was one of my favorites of 2022. I believe it was. Or was it 2021? Oh, it was 2021. And this is actually, um, I believe this was the first movie my wife and I saw after the COVID-19 pandemic. We we went to the theater a couple of times during the COVID pandemic, but this one was um, one of the one of the first ones we saw like at the tail end of the pandemic. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. And next up, we are going over the final Ridley Scott film in in his filmography, House of Gucci. If you haven't seen it, you got to go check it out. It is a hilarious biopic and probably not all true, but hey, it's a ball. And there's a lot of reasons to recommend it. It's not in the top 10, but it is a pretty enjoyable film. And it looks like it's off Amazon now. It used to be on Amazon Prime, so you can watch it if you have Prime. But it looks like it's off. I already purchased it. I It was $14.99 at the time. So, yeah. Go, go watch it. Get a copy however you can. You can buy it. Or let's see, let's see. Oh, it looks like it's on Paramount Plus. And I don't know why, but it is saying that it is on Amazon Prime. So check it out. You will enjoy yourselves. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for The Last Duel. And I uh, hope, hope you tune in next time. And... The final episode for Ridley Scott is coming up after House of Gucci, where we're going to rate every single episode, and we're going to do one final conclusion 
to Mr. Ridley Scott's filmography. Although he's got one more film coming out, Napoleon, and then he has Gladiator 2 following behind that. But we can talk about those when those come out. All right. Thanks for tuning in and listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.